Uh, here we're going to switch gear a little bit, but still about access network technologies. And so far, uh, if you paid attention, each of these uh, access net technologies operates on some sort of mechanism or protocols. They also operate with assumption on there's a companion physical media. This is important, just like the protocols are important to achieve a certain expected performance, typically achieving a really high bandwidth. So let's go over these physical medias that work side by side uh, with each of these access technologies. Now first, let's define some terms. Bit. Uh, these bits are propagated between the transmitter and the receiver. And between the transmitter and the receiver, whatever the media is, is called a physical link. And these links can be wired uh, there's a special term called guided media for it. If it's wireless link, then it's unguided media, meaning that the signal might just go propagating uh, omnidirectional everywhere. Okay. As opposed to guided media, there's usually a copper wire or an optic fiber that the signal kind of just follow and being guided to travel through the uh, physical media. Uh, there are four kinds of uh, physical medias we'll be talking about. First is twisted pair, and this is one of uh, the commonly used cable for Ethernet. Uh, Cat5, this is very old for you know Ethernet that's 10 years ago. Nowadays, I think um, we're still using a lot of Cat5 cables which supports up to uh, 100 megabits per second and might be reasonably okay for one gigabit Ethernet. But uh, if you purchase a 10 gigabits per second switch um, for intensive use, make sure you get these cables, CAT6, particularly 6A. This will allow you to have physical uh, transmission bandwidth up to 10 gigabits per second. Just, you know, by the way, it doesn't make sense to buy a really high speed switch and the cable limits the sp uh, speed. Okay. Next in line is coaxial cable. And uh, this picture shows pretty much the structure of such a coaxial cable. Uh, what it meant by coaxial is that they have uh, two layers, uh, co-centric, and these two layers of coppers uh, allow you to send signals. And because having two layers, it kind of, you know, allow the modulator demodulators to easily uh, filter out, cancel out the noises. And so data goes bidirectional on such a cable. A very primitive form of, a form of this coaxial cable was used by the legacy Ethernet. Yeah, by baseband, it meant that uh, the, the bandwidth is really, really small. Uh, very low rate transmission and it doesn't exist anymore. But then cable network picks it up, uh, but enhance it somehow so that they can send multiple video programs over it, allowing multiple channels on the cable. And uh, yeah, the cable exactly used by the cable network is HFC, the hybrid uh, fiber copper cable. Mm -hmm. Oops. And the third is the fiber cable. Okay, so this is entirely glass-based fiber. And the bits are being sent as pulses. Okay, like that. It works in a very high speed. You can go up to hundreds of gigabits per second. These high speed high speed fibers are oftentimes used by OSO, the internet backbone, where lots of data are being exchanged. Uh, it's also used by the data centers where there are always high volume data that needs to be stored or retrieved. These fibers, as we heard, FTTH, uh, some of them uh, slightly lower end is used for residential access as well. And they are very high speed, partly because it's very lower, uh, low error rate because they are more resilient to white noises, background, EM noises. 
The last media is the radio link. This one is very special. It is in fact the one that's used by all wireless and network access technologies. So what that's listed here are just a few examples. Terrestrial microwave um, operating at about 45 megabits per second maximum. Wi-Fi, well, depending on the version, could be lower, 10 megabits per second, or half of 100 megabits per second. Wider area wireless access, 4G, for example, goes up to a few megabits per second. 5G is now tens of megabits per second, okay, with the potential going higher than 100 megabits per second. And satellite radio. Yeah, the bandwidth range spans wider with satellite, uh, probably because of you know where the satellite is exactly and the technologies being implemented on that satellite. It can go from kilobits per second to 45 megabits per second. But one common feature is this. For satellite links, end to end delay will always be much longer than all these other wireless link access. Now as to exactly how long the end-to-end -end delay is, it really depends on where the satellite is. For geosynchronous satellites, which sit higher above in, you know, above Earth, uh, the delay will get longer. Uh, the low attitude ones being lower, uh -huh, then shorter end-to-end -end delay. So radio links, very special. Essentially, we are sending bits uh, through these electromagnetic waves. There are no physical wire, so it's called unguided media. Data can go bidirectional, well, in fact, of, you know, all directional, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good and a bad thing. If you think about the propagation of these electromagnetic waves, it can be influenced by environmental effects. Uh, having objects around, the objects can obstruct further transmission of further propagation of the electromagnetic magnetic waves. And some objects might reflect okay, uh, these waves as well. Okay. And uh, the waves can be interfering with each other, coming from different sources, or even coming from the same uh, radio source. It's called the multi-pass effect. Physical media, radio, uh, it's very convenient, but you see the challenge of, you know, sending, transmitting signals through these magnetic waves. You see also generally the wireless links, uh, the maximum cap capacity usually lower than the guided media's capacity.